Hey guys, today we are talking about one of the most requested topics on my Instagram DMs. Vibrato. Here we go. Welcome to the fourth episode of Violin Playing. Vibrato is one of the main ingredients of your signature sound. It's one of the things that unmistakably make you sound like you. At the same time it's important to say that even the greatest vibrato is completely useless without the support of a great sound coming from your right hand. You should use your vibrato to enhance your sound and not your sound to enhance your vibrato. And yes, you guessed it, there will be a separate video on sound production as well. The stuff I'll be talking about today might be met with a lot of disagreement, but oh well. So here are my views on vibrato. I'm just gonna say it. I don't really believe in a wrist vibrato. <laughs> or let alone a finger vibrato, which I think is a totally made up thing. I think wrist vibrato sounds too shallow, it's hard to control the speed, and quite frankly, I think it looks kinda silly. Okay, now that we have gotten the hate out of the way, why do I not believe in wrist vibrato? Here's why. Remember what I said in one of the last episodes about your left hand setup? I believe that the hand position should be the same no matter what position or string you're playing on. A wrist vibrato is basically useless because once you get up to higher positions, there is no way around an arm vibrato. Having a different kind of vibrato for your higher positions is gonna just sound strange and inconsistent if you're vibrating just from your wrist in the lower positions. It's like those weird movies where they had to switch actors mid-shooting due to some weird budget issues. Also, when you're playing double stops and you wanna vibrate those, there is no way around vibrating with your entire arm. There's just too much resistance with two fingers on the fingerboard. Also, you can vibrate much wider if you decide to do so. It just gives you more options. I think arm vibrato is the way to go. It's more universal, it's it's easier to slow down, it's more controllable, you can vibrate in any position you like, and you can vibrate double stops as well, so that's all the upsides for me. I'm not denying the fact that the wrist plays a little bit of a role when you vibrate, but it's definitely not the lead actor, supporting at best. Okay, I think I have expressed enough disliking for the wrist vibrato at this point, <laughs> let's look at how I think it should be done. As I said, the first thing I want to check is your hand position. I like to have my hand lower in relation to the neck so I can put my fingers down really flat, like so, you see? Because the more surface you have, the more you can roll about. And vibrato is essentially just rolling your finger and using as much contact surface as you can get. What is also very helpful is having the arm a little bit over, I mean the elbow, a little bit over and under the violin. And also, when I vibrate, I don't touch here at all. I leave the space open because it gives me more freedom. So the only contact points, again, are the thumb and the tip of the finger. The one finger joint that's very important when you vibrate is this one, the one that's closest to the tip, because you want to be able to let it collapse, you see? This has to be completely free. I'll be showing an exercise later in this video how you can get the flexibility going. Because once you vibrate, it's going to be happening, you see? When I vibrate, the first motion is downwards. So I start on the note I'm trying to vibrate, and from there, I go back. So let's say I'm vibrating in F sharp. And in full speed, it sounds like this. What really helps me is focusing on the impulse that goes up and making that the main impulse. Some people like to compare vibrato with a knocking motion. I disagree with that because I think the main impulse is the one that's coming your way and not away from you. Here's how I think of vibrato. Do this with me right now. Take your arm and just do this kind of motion, like you're throwing your hands. I hate pretty much every single superhero movie out there, but for the sake of this analogy, I'm gonna go there. So, you know how Spider-Man shoots his spider web? It's this kind of motion. That's exactly what it is pretty much. You're throwing your arm out and then your arm is stopping you from going all the way. And now you reverse that motion and you are doing it like this way. So you're throwing your hand your way 
towards you. You make that your main impulse. And then you do this motion in quick succession and you narrow down that motion and you basically have vibrato. I think the impulse for the vibrato is always coming from this muscle, the lower tricep right here. Once you actually figure out vibrato, you realize that actually you have a little bit of attention going on there all the time. It's like a very controlled cramp almost, but not in some sort of painful or tiresome way. Here are some exercises for you that helped me a great deal. First of all, you want to practice your vibrato like everything else slowly. What I would actually recommend is practicing a vibrato with a metronome. Let's say we are going for two amplitudes per bow. At the same time, make sure that you're not touching with your index here. That can happen very easily. So be mindful of that. Now let's go for three. Now let's go for four. How about six? Remember also to have your arm out more this way. It's gonna help you to have a much freer vibrato. Okay, how about eight? Then you can go for 12, let's say. Eventually, you'll find yourself in a very controllable cramp almost. There will be a little switch in your mindset suddenly. It's not going to be you controlling every single amplitude. The arm will start doing it by itself with enough practice and putting enough time into it to actually develop that kind of feeling. And then it sort of feels like you're not the driver anymore, but you're the passenger who is being driven around. You can still control the speed of it, but it develops its own life almost. For doing this kind of exercise, I also recommend going really wide just to really help your fingers to develop that kind of flexibility and strength actually. And it's gonna take some experimentation figuring out, but I have confidence in you. I believe in you. Another great exercise that a teacher of mine showed me, and this one actually involves your wrist, so I have no idea how it actually works, but it really does. Here's how it works. You start out completely flat with your finger, right? Let's say the second finger for instance. And then you use nothing but your wrist to roll all the way almost to your fingernail. So the tip of your finger. You're trying to achieve a semitone simply by rolling back and forth. Third finger. Fourth finger. First, it's really important that you really start with a finger that's completely flat and I'm using just my wrist to do that, look at that. And right after you're done with this exercise, it just feels amazing for some reason. Another thing that's super important is keeping your vibrato continuous. You really want to make sure that you're actually starting and ending the vibrato at the same spot so that the hand keeps moving and you're simply transferring the vibrato from one finger to another. Earlier we said that the vibrato always starts from the top of the note and then goes down and then back up. So you want to maintain that pattern as you're switching from one finger to another. Here are some final thoughts. Working on a vibrato is gonna require a lot of experimenting. It will also be a matter of taste. Who are your heroes? What kind of sound are you aspiring to have? What I also recommend is imitating the hell out of your favorite violinists. I think imitation is a great way of learning because it gives you the tools to create something of your own eventually. I remember when I was learning vibrato, I would basically imitate a different violinist every week. I remember just watching video cassettes and DVDs, that was a thing back then, and just basically imitating a different violinist every single week, just like looking at their hand position, what are they doing, where does the impulse come from, 
and all that experimenting eventually leads you somewhere. It led me to believe that our vibrato is a superior vibrato, but you go find your own truth. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, there will certainly be more coming your way. Until next time, happy experimenting and happy practicing. See you then.